What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be a bit unconventional from my usual content. It's going to be about the Singer 457 sewing machine. Now before you turn this off and say this video is going to be too feminine for you, well, here's a couple things to think about. Sewing can be a very handy and useful skill. I ripped my pants today and I don't want to go out and spend $40 on another pair of high quality pants. Apparently they weren't that high quality, but you know how sometimes a sharp piece of metal sticks out and tears your pants? Oh well. So this gives you the ability to fix things at home. Um, I got some reflective stripping that I want to sew on some of my pants, similar to what uh, tow truck drivers have. So that's some of my ideas for this sewing machine. Additionally, this is not your modern day sewing machine. Modern day sewing machines are pretty much not built with the same quality. They're, they're not built to last. I mean, the housing on this is metal. Well, the top piece is plastic, but I mean, this is a mostly metal uh, sewing machine and it was built in I believe 1969 so it's a really cool sewing machine really high quality I mean it, it's it's really rebuildable but it does need maintenance and, and today's video is primarily going to be about the maintenance of this 457 I got this from the neighbor whose uh, mother had passed away and she lived in a separate house and they were about to get rid of it and I asked if I could have it and sure enough, here it is. And it came with this cool table which the sewing machine literally collapses into the table like so. And this side actually folds on top of it which I got some stuff on it right now so it's a, it's a very handy design, very cool setup. So I'm having a small issue that I'm hoping I can resolve by maintaining this machine today. And basically when I initiate stitching, it's slow to start, but after it gets going, it seems to be fine. So my guess is there's a lot of friction in the moving part. So I'm hoping by cleaning out any lint or anything that may be inside, uh, slowing the mechanical process down, I can clean that out as well as oil everything. And then hopefully it'll run nice and smooth. Here's a couple of these stitches that I had been practicing on, which, not too bad. Always could be a little bit better though, so let's get into this thing. So as mentioned earlier, I believe this machine is a little bit slow on the start, and I don't think it's really reaching peak speed, so this is going to be me pressing down the foot pedal all the way right now. I mean, it's, it's running okay. I'd, I'd like to see it running a bit better though. Now there's another issue with this machine that I'm hoping to resolve. There's a knob right here and it has an R, F, and then a D. I know the D stands for fine, so fine, or, uh, fine materials such as silk. Uh, R, I believe, stands for regular duty and I'm not sure what the D stands for. I'd have to go back to the manual, but I can't get this to switch out of F. So I believe uh, later on in this video, I'm gonna have to flip this machine on its side and oil a couple points underneath the machine. So uh, when I go under there, hopefully I can find the reason why this is jammed. There's some marring on this dial too. So it looks like somebody took some pliers and probably wrenched this thing at one point. Also, I see some paint missing on the, uh, the steel body. So yeah, let's see if we can figure out what's going on on the underside. But the first thing I gotta do is take off this front cover over here and we'll maintenance that. So to take off this front cover there's just a screw you can take off by hand and this cover just goes like so. I have a magnetic parts holder which I'm going to keep that in so I don't lose it. And from in here, well it's important that I turn the machine off and unplug it just so no accidents happen. But in here there are quite a few places that we need to oil, so uh, this bar right here needs to be cleaned of any lint, which there is no lint whatsoever on that, so that's nice and clean. Also you need to clean in between the tension disc right here, which these put tension on the thread. And inspecting this with my light right now, I'm seeing a little bit of lint, so I'm going to get in there with a the toothpick. Additionally here are all the points that the service manual says that I need to oil on this side of the machine. Say that looks pretty clean. Now we gotta oil it. 
So when I got this machine, a bunch of accessories came with it, including this original Singer sewing machine oil. 39 cents. It probably was bought when the machine was bought, so it's pretty cool. You know what? It's going to be easier for me to take off this top cover and then get to some of these points. So uh, I'm going to take off the top, top cover now, and that's pretty simple. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver. There's two flathead screws on the top of this machine. Simply unscrew. This cover should come off like so. I'll just put that off to the side. Oh well. Wow. Okay, I'll give you guys a look in there in a minute, but let me oil these points now. All right, I also need to do some maintenance inside this throat plate area. There's a manual dial on the right side of the machine where you can control how the needle goes up and down. So you're gonna wanna raise your needle to its highest position. And then according to the manual, with your right thumb, you push it up like this, and then it should slide out to the right, like so. There we go. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of a little bit of lint in here, so I just need to figure out what the best way to access this. I think I'm going to remove this bobbin, which this just pops right out of here. Put that in my magnetic tray. Take a look at the instructions here. Okay, so I've actually figured out the proper way to install and remove this bobbin. I believe this is a bobbin case, as they call it. So what you do, take a flathead screwdriver, lift up on this, push forward, and then this bobbin case comes right out like so. Just when you re-engage it, there are rails that it needs to engage with. And you can tell once it's engaged. And from there, you can slide that back over. That's good to go. And from here, I don't know how well the camera is picking that up, but you can clearly see that there's a good bit of lint. That is uh, quite a bit there. Still some more down in there. There's also a little bit of thread. Oh yeah, there's another good chunk. Must have been a while since this machine was maintenance. There's another good chunk. Now I'm gonna take my headlight off its stand. Just take a quick look in here. I see a little bit of thread it's wound up down here. Looks like it's been down here for some time. Uh, other than that, I think I got pretty much most of it. Also, there is a spot that I'm supposed to oil down in here. So that's actually going to be right in the center here. So what I'm going to do is take my toothpick and just clean out the center of this. Yeah, according to my manual, that's the, uh, the only spot that I'm supposed to oil, which I kind of expect that I need to oil more in here. Oh, that's a lot. All right, should be well oiled now. And work that in there a little bit. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Now I should be able to reinstall this throat plate and I'm gonna have to lift this, this tab up.
slide it in, and it should go back into place. Okay, here's a look at the machine from the top. So the points I'm going to have to oil are here, here. Let me get a toothpick. Where did my toothpick go? So I can point exactly where I'm going to oil. So right there, right there. I need to oil that. Oil here, oil here, and oil in there. Also, there are two sets of gears. These gears are quite dry. You can see that black gear down in there. That is very dry. So what I plan to do is uh, I'm going to get a Q-tip, a couple Q-tips, and clean off any of this old gunk that I can. And then I'm going to reapply. I know they make Singer uh, or specific. I think there's the, a lot of people on the forums were recommending some type of True Flow. Uh, grease for these plastic gears, but a lot of people have said just pure petroleum jelly works fine too So that's what I have on hand uh, I'd, I'd imagine that's gonna work fine, you know I'll Take a peek at it see if it runs smoother and uh, I can always take it off and put something else on there But you know just trying to save some money here, and there's also a worm drive gear in there and Because there's oil on it, and everything appears to be metal I think I'm just going to add some regular oil to that. So yeah, let me get started on this. Okay, I've lied. I'm actually going to take a piece of cloth first and see what I can get with this. Which actually cleans up pretty easily. Okay, so I've taken some of the petroleum jelly and I've placed it on. This is actually a clip to a bread bag. Uh, that way I can keep reapplying this with the same Q-tip as opposed to dipping back down into the petroleum jelly and contaminating it with uh, any bit of excess grease that I missed. I'm not really sure how much to put on here. Just give it a good coat and a good bit in between all the gears. Worst comes to worst, you know, if I put too much on here then it's just going to fling off on the sides, which it's done in the past, so no big deal. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to oil everything that needs to be oiled. A couple of drops. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> oil this. There's no oil on that. There's a little hole right here. Okay, I'm going to give this a couple of rotations manually here, see if I can feel any reduction in friction. Hearing a little bit of squeaking, I don't like that. Kind of sounds like it's the plastic gears. I don't know. It'll probably work smoother as you know as I run it more. Okay, we also got to do some maintenance on the underbelly of this. So now I'm gonna put these covers back on, and then we're gonna flip it on its side and go from there. Now earlier in the video, I had mentioned I had a problem with adjusting this dial. I want to set it to regular, but doesn't want to turn so I traced it when I turn this dial moves this connecting rod and then it goes to almost uh, looks like somewhat of a piston in here right and I believe that piston is a bit seized and I think I partially see why looking at the rear side of the piston uh, where are we right in there you can see that some lint has built up in there and I doubt that's been oiled in quite a while so I'm going to remove that lint, put some oil in there and then try and work it free. So clearly I've loosened and removed quite a few components to, uh, to get better access to this pin and uh, I'm 
pretty much fine in that the uh, the best and only way that I'm going to be able to, uh, to free this thing up is through some persuasion. So very delicately, got a pair of channel locks. I'm going to work this thing back and forth. I don't want to be doing this. I prefer to be doing this a more delicate way, but yeah. Sometimes you just gotta give it a little force, and I, I hate hate the sound of that, but I did put some penetrating oil in there. At least it is moving. Very roughly, but it is moving. There we go. I just felt like it freed up pretty good. Oh man, that's still rough. Get some more penetrating oil in there. She's freeing up. Cool. Now I need to uh, try and put this thing back together, which there's a lot of small, delicate pieces that I need to account for, and I need to make sure everything is set properly. So, uh, yeah, let me try and put this back together now. If anyone's curious, these are the points on the underside of the machine where you're supposed to clean, or excuse me, oil, which I think I got a pretty good idea. So, you want to oil. This wanna oil this point. I also wanna oil up here. And this got that one. Oil there. I don't think I got enough out of that one. My issues is I'm running out of oil here, or well, there's there's still oil in the can, but I'm having trouble uh, I think I got it that time. Okay, so I'm not sure where I left off in this video, but after I had reassembled things, I realized that when I took that belt off, I threw off the timing of the machine. So I just did some research on how to correct the timing of the machine. Uh, resetting the timing really isn't that bad. It took me a little bit of time to find the proper information, but uh, it's really not too bad, and that's why I'm making this video. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to remove the front cover, and then also you're going to need to rotate the machine, remove the cover on the underside, and then what you're going to need is a 3 30 seconds Allen head, like so. And what you're going to need to do is, on this pulley right here, this forward pulley, let me zoom in a little bit, there's going to be a couple set screws on here. There's two set screws. So there's one right here, and I've already freed up the other one, and the other one's right about here. Uh, it's not directly across from it, but there are two on this pulley. Um, so the idea behind removing these two set screws is that this pulley can spin independently of this shaft and that's what you want. So after you've loosened up those two set screws, we're going to tilt the machine back down in its normal position. I'm going to take the camera off the stand for a minute. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to Okay, so what you're going to need to do here is slide this plate back, remove the bobbin, remove the bobbin holder. In order to remove the bobbin holder, it normally sits in here like so. What you do is with the finger or screwdriver, lift this up, slide it off to the right, and the bobbin holder comes out like that. Really easy. And with this cover, this is really simple. All you do is take a finger lift up this corner 
and it'll pop up like this and then you just slide it out. This tab just raises and lowers like so. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to look for the timing marks and I'm going to set up the camera here. Okay, I, sh I should have mentioned of course you want the power in the to this machine off and you want it unplugged so what you're going to be looking for is the timing marks and I'll explain to you how this works. So here are your timing marks. You have an upper timing mark and a lower timing mark. So what you want is you want to rotate this uh, the, the cycle manually and when you rotate it you want it to go in this direction which if you look looking right at it it should be a counterclockwise direction so I'm gonna rotate it all the way down then you can see that lower timing mark is right there and I want that lower timing mark to come up and just about disappear into its housing or casting which that's just about disappeared and that's just about where you want it. So after you set that timing mark, I'm going to adjust the camera again and I'm going to show you what to look for on this, uh, I'll call it a bobbin, bobbin reel, I'm not sure if that's the, the right term. Okay, so now that we have this needle set properly, what you're going to be looking for is this spike right here, this barb. I'm calling this the bobbin reel, I'm not sure what the proper name for it is, but because we removed those set screws, this is that shaft that goes down there and connects to that pulley. So this will spin independently of that pulley and that belt. So that allows us to adjust this. And now what you're looking for is you want the tip, this barb, to be just to the left, maybe two thousandths of an inch to the left of this needle from my understanding. You definitely don't want the tip of this, this barb to the right in the needle on this side. If anything you want it to the left just a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it to where I think it should be. Try and adjust the camera so you get a good idea. Uh, there we go. I'm going to rotate it right about there. It's about where I like it. See that barb is just to the left of that needle just a little bit. So now very carefully I'm going to tilt this machine back on its side and this pulley has actually slid off the shaft a little bit so I'm going to come back around to the other side and on that bobbin reel I'm going to put very light pressure but very careful not to move it. I'm going to push this pulley back in. I'm going to come back in here with my Allen wrench. I'm going to look for a set screw and very carefully, without moving anything, I moved it a little bit, I'm going to just tighten one set screw. Put a little bit of pressure on one set screw. So now I'm going to fold the machine back down again. Look how it's set, which it still looks like it's set about right. And now I'm going to with my hand cycle the machine manually see how it looks I'm going to look at my set marks that's just about disappearing see how that barb is just in front of the needle it's a little far on that run, let me rotate it again Looking at my set marks, see on the upstroke when that bottom timing mark is just about flush with the cast casting. It disappeared. And that's about it. I think uh, I think that'll be okay. Alright, I'm gonna put this machine back together and then we'll give it a test. Okay, I think I'm ready for a test here. Let me give this a test stitch and see how this machine runs.
call that very smooth. I'd say I'm really happy with that. The speed of the machine has improved. The stitching is much tighter than what it was. It's just running so much more efficiently, so I'm really happy with this repair. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more.